Okay, so welcome to Retech again, and today we're going to look at the ZX Spectrum that you can see playing in the background. Um, but it's kind of following on from my recreating classic computers out of parts um, with modern hardware and its emulation. And that's in between all of the other items that I'd like to cover, such as, you know, new machines, classic machines, new software, where they came from, the educational side and so on. But, you know, I've got a plan to try and recreate as many of these classic micros with modern hardware. Um, and it's more for convenience and to use with um, HDMI, TVs, etc. And this one you may recognize as the recreated ZX Spectrum, which is what this originally started out as and probably know my opinion of this is that they actually missed the point and missed the boat with it the case was nice the keyboard was nice the look and feel was nice the execution was poor and um, it was never what it, it was intended to be when it was actually first touted as a crowdfunded project now the machine or the keyboard is really well done uh, you can't knock that it's nicely done um, but it was the fact that it was just a USB keyboard really was the sad part about the whole thing now what I've done is um, as you can see it's now running as a spectrum with just two cables power and HDMI and that is it and that's roughly where I wanted to be with this so what we're going to do is to cover how this was built and um, how it actually works and runs and you know see the outcome of it a little bit further down the line so hopefully you're going to enjoy this one hopefully um, we'll give you a few ideas of what you can do with um, a recreated ZX Spectrum or even a ZX Spectrum case so let's take a look and see how it was done all right so we have the um, recreated Spectrum here um, one of my most hated retro redos to be honest because it looks magnificent it looks the part it looks just like it should and um, it should have been so much better it's just a USB keyboard mapped with 40 keys for a ZX Spectrum and that that's it that's it that was such a letdown of a machine and there's the original behind it now and it looks just about the same it's stunning it's a really nice copy of a zx spectrum i'm just amazed that it wasn't better and it wasn't better thought out and it wasn't better planned or executed and the kickstarter that was for it, people wanted so much more but this is what you ended up with and what you ended up with was a nice recreation, very similar, similar feel. You know, the the quality of the plastics aren't bad. The the keyboard looks very similar. The the actual plate, the top plate looks very similar. The case looks very similar. But it's not really a ZX Spectrum keyboard. It hasn't got the same membrane underneath. Um, and it's designed to work with a USB keyboard interface only and it was designed for Android it was designed to be used as a USB keyboard and that was about it it was so so disappointing which is why I have no qualms in making this into something really useful what I want to do is put an emulator inside to turn it into a modern ZX Spectrum and to do this um, we're going to use the good old Raspberry Pi. This one's a little bit modified, which I'll go over in a minute. And then that's the actual USB keyboard interface, which is inside of the machine, which I've taken out. Because all that's inside is this. That is it. Nothing else. If we take the lid off the recreated Spectrum, you see this, which is this way up. And what you have is that sits there. And there's a little battery compartment it's about this high which sits here now i've ground this off and i didn't use anything 
complicated. It was just a, a small handheld angle grinder with a stone cutting disc on it, quite a thick one. And what happens is you just grind it gently down. You don't try and cut it off. You just grind the whole thing flush. And every now and again, just pause to give it a wipe because it is molten plastic and just pick it off. And you're left with quite a nice finish, really. It doesn't need any real finishing. So the next point really that I did is um, cut this little relief in the bottom. And then on the same case, on the top half, I cut a matching relief on the top, kind of like it emulates the port on a original ZX Spectrum. But it's, um, you know, obviously not quite as long and it's a little deeper. And the reason it's deeper is because it has to accept the Raspberry Pi. So once you've cut out your relief, in the case that's really all you need to do because the next thing you have to do is take your Raspberry Pi this is a 3B plus and take off a USB port you don't need four on this so the easiest way is to get a small pair of cutters and just clip the port off and then done you don't have to worry about damaging the board once if you try to desolder it so clip the port off, you're left with the bottom of the plastic, which is got the two points going through it where it's actually soldered direct to the board. You can see the two big solder joints there. And then once you've clipped it off, that's all you need to do. That's your Raspberry Pi set up. So what you need to do now is to place this back in the unit and the Raspberry Pi in the unit as well. Now I want it to look like a Spectrum so I don't want any cables coming out of the back of the machine so we're going to play about with how it's set up. So here's your recreated Spectrum, we're just going to lift the lid and there's your two ribbon cables that connect to the little USB keyboard interface here and they're not the same as the original Spectrum but you know, they just recreated the membrane to match something that looked very similar. It's not an exact copy either. So originally this sits tight up against here. Now, I don't want that. I'm going to sit this about here. So I can run the cable through. To be honest, I might just set it slightly off just enough room to get the cables in and then this is your pi and i want to really be able to unplug the hdmi and the power more than the usb port so that's the reason for clipping the port so if it sits nicely in here which it does this port here doesn't need to be there because it actually catches the case itself so if you look at the case you have a step okay so it sits in between here nice and tightly against there and you've got to clear that step so which is why you've got to lose a USB port and then the idea is once it's all together it can be put into the case like so and you should just have the Raspberry Pi out the back but nice and secure rather than loose. So I'm gonna have a bit of a seat on this and a play and position them neatly so we can then put the machine together. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is mount the Pi and I'm using this heavy duty tape for now, mounting tape. Uh, when I'm done I uh, will actually screw the the actual pie into the board using the original four port points of screw points on here okay so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm just gonna mount this now
So that nice and securely mounted to the board. The next point, we're just going to try and get this USB adapter into a, a place where we can use the top without straining these leads or cables as much because I want to be able to connect it straight to here with a small USB lead. Okay, so there's a cable just held in by a little bit of tape at the moment just to get the idea of where it's going to go. And we're going to mount it roughly here. So we're going to mount the keyboard here. So the USB keyboard controller is going to be mounted here. So let's just put it in place. so it's in place now it's all mounted down and um, all we've got to do now is just run the cabling through but before we do that I'm just going to test fit it to the bottom of the case little strip of tape here just to hold everything neatly in place while we test fit the top of the unit so if we take this unit here And hopefully, we should be able just to plug it in. And then with a bit of luck, it will all fit together. But it's slightly out, so I've had to rearrange the cable routing. And this one just slightly, so it's a bit wider, so it clears the top of the pie. Okay, so if you look through the back now, you can see the pie in place. USB lead and it goes through to the um, little keyboard control which is about here now so we're just going to screw it together Okay, we're just going to now put the, the original cap in place. Okay, and then you have a system which looks like it hasn't really been touched. Turn it over, looks like a Spectrum. On the back, nicely bolted in, cover in place. You've got your port here, which um, I'm just going to make a little bit of a cover, finishing cover to go on here. I'll just make one up. Um, but other than that, it's um, Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And the nice thing about it, you just need your power and your HDMI cable out, and then that's it. So if we now pan up, you can see it's now a ZX Spectrum. And you just navigate around your file system, open file, and then we'll just go to something a little bit more iconic, Jetpack. Yeah, you now I found the keys for it. And it works a treat, it works exactly how it should work. So, yeah, it's um, exactly what I wanted to see now. It's a useful machine. Now, as you can see, it works really well. It looks the part, it feels the part. It is just a ZX Spectrum. For all intents and purposes, that's exactly what it is. 
but it's got modern components in it's got a flash drive full of software um, you can connect it to the internet if you wanted to um, you could do a lot more than what the standard ZX Spectrum could do it can run as a 48, a plus 2, plus 3 and a, the 128 as well just a standard 128 and it's um, quite a good piece of software behind it and it works really well so if you've got one of these recreated ZX Spectrums and you're wondering what to do with it this probably is a nice route to go and it makes a really nice addition to your collection and it becomes useful so a lot of people are going to say well why do it when they probably know I've already got a few ZX Spectrums but this is usable I can pull this out plug it in play a game put it away not even think about it take it out let friends use it people who want to have a go on it play a game do a little bit of basic on it don't need to worry about it whereas um, the classic machines you're constantly worrying about whether they're going to go wrong or they're going to be dropped or someone's going to damage them by accident so again it makes a lot of sense to build one of these so I hope you enjoyed this and um, I hope you liked our look at recreating a ZX Spectrum with modern hardware so it's on our emulation themes thanks for watching and we'll see you soon